here's an overreaction if I've ever seen one. Some people think there should be another quarterback battle between Bo Prabula and Drew Aller just because of a few winter workouts. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily Penn State Nittany Lions podcast. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You got to download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On at Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams football, men's basketball, wrestling, men's hockey. You name it, it's here on the show. And let me know in the comments, is there a quarterback battle based on a few winter workouts? I'm here to tell you, no, there shouldn't be a quarterback battle. I understand the backup quarterback is the most popular guy in town. And it is strange that now you have five of them in the books and Bo Prabula's won a majority of them. You had Ethan Grunkmeyer sneak in there, the, in, the true freshman early enrollee, and no sign of Drew Aller. But it is a severe overreaction to say that, well, because Bo Prabula is a better athlete at Haluba Hall and in the weight and in the weight room that he deserves to unseat Drew Aller as the starting quarterback. And there's and there's a lot of reasons behind this. Okay. For winter winter workouts are team building, right? This is a chance to get stronger, better conditioning, but it's not about X's and O's. People are forgetting that element. Let's let's compare and contrast Trace McSorley and Tommy Stevens. You could argue that Tommy Stevens might have been the better overall athlete, but who was the better quarterback? Who was better at reading defenses? Who was better in the film room? Who had a better arm, a more accurate arm, was a better passer at the end of the day? And that's what this is all over again. You can't bench Drew Aller just because 25 touchdown passes a season ago. Two interceptions for a first-year starter, and one of them came in a bowl game. So one interception during the regular season before that second one came against Ole Miss. And you want to bench that? I understand he didn't exactly live up to expectations, but what part of the offense did? Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen underperformed. All of the wide receivers underperformed. The offensive line underperformed. Essentially, the tight ends were the only ones to go above and beyond expectations with Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren, all the other, and the play calling, all the other aspects of the offense were held back a season ago. So if if that's your concern, if that's your reaction, because Bo Prabula might have some faster times in Holuba Hall right now, is the winter workout warrior, the competitor of the day, it's it's a major, major overreaction. Drew is the returning starter. He's going to be the returning starter. There is no quarterback battle in this case. But I don't want to put no stock into this at all. I think winter workouts are absolutely important. I think it's important to know the competitor of the day. There are people that say, ah, oh, that's nice. Who who really cares? No, you should care, but you have to be selective with how you care. So quarterback's different because there's not this opening, open competition at that position. But think about how about wide receiver? How about offensive line when the wide receivers did absolutely little to nothing a season ago? You want to know who has the best, who's having the best offseason offensive line, which is losing three bona fide veteran starters at both tackle spots and center. I would like to know who is standing out in the offseason, might have an inside track to some more playing time. So you have to be selective with where you care uh, about the winner workout results. And there's also this too. We are also assuming that every single player on the Penn State football roster is available, that they're 100%, they're not banged up, there's no bumps and bruises, they're healthy, they're not dealing with any illnesses in the winter season, may I remind you, when everybody gets cold and flu and right COVID and, and what have you, and hopefully that's not the case here. But when you look at these winter workout results, let's talk about last year, Khalil Dinkins, and I'm not trying to take anything away from him, better in backup tight end at this point, and, and people are anticipating him to break out. But a year ago, he was constantly the winner workout warrior over and over. And it's like, okay, is he really turning the corner here? But then we come to find out that Tyler Warren and Theo Johnson were not 100% for a majority of the winter workout season. 
So it makes sense that the next man up in the room was the one finishing in first place consistently because, yes, he's going to be better than the less experienced players and the first-year freshmen at the tight end position. So that's the same case. I am not implying, I don't have any inside information of Drew Aller's availability or healthiness or anything like that, but we never know. Somebody might have a conflict on a given day and might not be there, and that kind of skews the results. So we're all looking at this from a spot of, everybody's there. Every single name on the roster is participating to the fullest extent. You can't give a winner. You can't give a competitor of the day to someone who's participating at, you know, with a specific plan or not fully in these practices. You're not going to award them that title. Bo Prabula, this is his forte. This is his bread and butter. This is his specialty. We know that he's a better athlete than Drew Aller. We know this, but who is the better quarterback? I still side on Drew Aller. Now, it's important to focus on the standout players of the day. Don't overreact, but don't underreact at all. You can have some balance here. Be selective with your perception of this because there are standout players. Bo Prabula is one of them, and there's a few others that need some recognition at this point as well with all of the roster changes going into 2024. We're going to discuss those next and what these winter workout competitor nominations mean for these specific players coming up on the other side of this break. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You gotta download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I've used the Game Time app. Some of the things that I like about the Game Time app experience, getting last minute tickets, but getting flash deals on those tickets, getting discounts on those last minute tickets. It's also easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. It's all organized for you. There's no guessing. There's no wondering what's going on around you. It's all sorted in the game time app and probably the best feature, peace of mind with image views of the seats. You're not second guessing. You're not wondering what that view, what that perspective is going to be like going to the venue of accurate depictions of where you're going to be sitting before you get to the event before you get to the venue. Lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection also included. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. You gotta download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms, about, uh, terms apply. Again, create that account, use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. The Locked On Podcast Network is making history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now can be found on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and now in the free Fire TV channels app. Bo Perbula is obviously a standout athlete. But there are a couple others. I'm impressed with Quentin Martin. Quentin Martin is probably the best prospect. I know there's Cooper Cousins. I know there's Luke Reynolds. But if you want to know my favorite player out of the class of 2024 with the most upside and potential, it is Quentin Martin. This is someone that could play right away. If there was a need at running back, you have Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen, a former five-star and a high-end four-star respectively, and two-year consecutive starters. If there was a need at running back, Quentin Martin fills that need. I think he's to change positions at wide receiver because there's just so much unknown and because of his athleticism and his versatility. And look, James Franklin pointed this out to me and pointed this out to the rest of the media group on National Signing Day back in December of 2023. Quentin Martin and Corey Smith, the other running back in this class. Now, Smith has an, an early, it was not an early enrollee, but Martin was. But he talked... Franklin alluded to this and talked about, hey, they have receiving capability. They were used as wide receivers in their high school offenses, so they have that experience. In the case of someone like Nicholas Singleton at the high school level, did not, was used purely as a returner, was used purely as a running back, did not line up out wide and have things schemed to him as a wide receiver. So when you have Singleton and Allen in the running back room, you also have London Montgomery. Coming back. You also have Cam Wallace, who was another one of those winner workout competitors of the day. You do have experience coming back, even though you lose the likes of Trey Potts. 
So there is this flexibility to move Quentin Martin out wide. But he's been nominated twice. And again, if we're assuming, right, I prefaced this in the first segment, we're assuming that Singleton and Allen are both available, Wallace as well, London Montgomery to the fullest extent. And Martin continually impresses twice now as a first-year player, an early enrollee coming out of high school football for Penn State. That is something to take stock into. He is competing for third running back reps at that point. I don't, knock on wood, this is a wooden desk. Singleton and Allen unavailable. You want that next person. Who's that next player going to be? Quentin Martin is looking all that and more. And the high school tape speaks for itself. You could play him anywhere. I expect him to be a kick returner. I expect him to compete at punt returner. It is going to be too difficult to, to keep Quentin Martin off the field. But when there is a log jam at running back with Singleton and Allen as co-starters already, and there's not going to be as many reps there. But at wide receiver, when you don't know what's going to happen, uh, yes, you have Julian Fleming, Keandre Lambert-Smith, and Trey Wallace, but that wasn't good enough. Julian Fleming helps, but KLS and Wallace, that wasn't good enough a season ago. So I'm saying inject some more competition into the wide receiver room and see what Quentin Martin can do because that's what that's what Coach Franklin said. Coach Franklin said he's a good wide receiver, he's capable, and there is a chance, but he didn't want to upset J1 Sider at that moment in time. Bo Prabula, of course, is obviously the standout here. He's not going to usurp Drew Aller as the starting quarterback, but could it lead to more reps on the football field? Could it lead to more design packages in an Andy Kotal nicky offense? Yes, it can. These things are indicators of what is to come going into the 2024 season. So it is an overreaction to say that Bo Prabula is going to be the starter and is a better quarterback than Drew Aller. That is not true, but you could say Bo Prabula is starting to turn a corner in his own personal right and can be used more in a two-quarterback system and select wildcat plays, and can we trust him more to throw the football and not just be a decoy on the football field and just addi an additional extra running back? We want to see him throw the football because that's my biggest concern. Can Bo Prabula accurately and with authority throw a football and not just be an extra running back next to Singleton and Allen. I want to be able to see some creativity with Andy Kotelnicki in these kind of Bo Prabula packages. But that's how you can translate all of this is that Bo Prabula will see more time on the football field to where it complements the offense, where it helps the offense. And Andy Kotelnicki has this experience when both Daniels and Bean were healthy at Kansas. They were running an effective two quarterback system, not a 50. I'm not advocating for a 50-50 split of snaps between Aller and Prabula, but you can get creative. You don't have to leave Prabula on the sidelines anymore. He is starting to play, and now he's a he's the third-year quarterback as well. He's, he's going to understand the offense. He's going to be able to read defenses better, not to the extent of Drew Aller, but you don't have to be worried about leaving Prabula on the sideline. You can use his talents in a way. I'm not concerned. And, and oh, wow, well, what about playing Bo Prabula more to keep him happy and keep him at Penn State? The idea is that Aller has a good season under Kotal Nicky, a great season, right? Ideally successful season, goes into the NFL and goes into the draft for the next cycle. And then Bo Prabula takes over. That is the idea. That's the idea. But it is not, it, not everything's going to wo work out that quick that quickly or that cleanly i should say when it comes to that but that i would say is the blueprint that is the plan for the way the quarterback depth chart is going to work if aller returns for another season then it's going to be a different conversation i'm getting way ahead of myself here i'm just talking i want to talk about winter workouts and players that are standing out but bo Prabula, you don't just ignore him but you can't say he's the starter i am going to be the new starter going into the 2024 season I think it's going to lead more playing time for him and more plays designed for him. A third player that I really like that has stood out is Zariah Fisher. Abdul Carter is making the change to defensive end, leaving the linebacker spot. There's denied Dennis Sutton. There's Amin Vanover. And once again, Zariah Fisher continues to show up for the defensive end spot. You also had Zane Durant. As the defense. So, this is a combination of defensive ends and defensive tackles. And for Zariah Fisher to win three of them, coming off of that nasty leg injury a couple of years back, and then was way ahead of his develop return on schedule 
was way ahead of schedule in terms of his recovery. And now he's winning these workouts three times out of five. And Zane Durant as well, when you had Devon Ali's come back, you have Akeem Beeman returning as well. Penn State has depth. Penn State has good, solid depth at both defensive tackle and defensive end. And these two, when you're looking for Zane Durant to finally have a true breakout season because he was one of the exciting incoming freshmen just a couple years back, and now you're looking for him to take over games within the trenches, you're also looking for a little more insurance at defensive end because Deny Dennis Sutton is that headline planner, headliner type of player. Abdul Carter has this potential, but we don't know. We don't know what this is going to be like. Sure, he's a cool, he's fun to watch as a stand-up pass rusher, but what happens when he has to go up one-on-one -on -one against a tackle with his hand in the dirt? I like the move, but there needs to be more than just that. So for Zariah Fisher to almost, he's almost offering a little bit of insurance here at the defensive end position to say, maybe Abdul Carter needs to move back to linebacker at some point or needs to split double duty, right? You're also losing Chop Robinson and Adisa Isaac to the draft. Zariah Fisher is a much better pass rusher than he is a rush run defender. I like Amin Vanover in that spot. However, seeing Fisher win multiple, not just one, but three of them now through five is impressive. And, and just to go over a few of them again, who's winning and, and who's standing out above the rest. Now, those are my three standouts here at, at the positions. And I'll go through all of them here. Bo Perbula is at quarterback and Ethan Grunkmeyer won the one at running back. Cam Wallace, Nicholas Singleton's one, two and Quentin Martin's 1-2 at wide receiver. It's kind of been roulette at this point. Liam Clifford one day, Malik Mega, Anthony Ivey, Julian Fleming, Amari Evans, and that's just been the story of the wide receiver room for the past two years now, really. Joey Schlaffer is another one that should get some recognition. Tyler Warren's won two of them, but Schlaffer, who redshirted a season ago, has taken home three winner workout titles. Nick Dawkins has won a couple. Addison Penn, don't forget about the tra former transfer offensive lineman. Addison Penn is now healthy. Anthony Donko, Javen Williams, talked about defensive line, linebackers, Tyler Elsden, Dom DeLuca, Tony Rojas, Cam Miller, A.J. Harris, Elliot Washington at cornerback. Those are my three favorite defensive backs going in, cornerbacks going into the season. Safety, Jalen Reed, Zach Key Wheatley, K.J. Winston, Lamont Payne, a lot of talent at that safety spot. And then it's special teams, Riley Thompson, Sanders Zahedak, and Tyler Dzanski. So those are the, the the my three, the big three, I would even say the big four for standouts. Joey Schlaffer, Quentin Martin, Oprah Beulah, obviously, and then Zariah Fisher are the ones that should be garnering your attention from these winter workouts. But don't overreact. Don't say that someone sent it, someone's going to get benched. Some, someone's going to lose a lot of playing time because they won a few winter workouts. And we're still early in the cycle. We're still halfway through this. There's spring football where it really matters when the X's and O's are back involved in it. But if you're looking for some names to know, to watch going into spring ball, those are your top four with the other ones that have trickled in a, as well. Now, I posed on X, formerly known as Twitter, a question. What football game would you change? A, a moment in a football game that didn't exactly go Penn State's way. I gave my take, and I had some interesting comments back, some interesting feedback about what plays you would change from Penn State football history. We're going to discuss on the other side of this break. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 is a winner. That's $150 in bonus bets if your bet wins. It's that simple. Bet on all your favorite NBA players, all your favorite NBA teams with things like quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. If you like a bunch of bets, you can combine them all together into one bet with a, same, with a parlay or a same game parlay with boosted odds and boosted winnings. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And remember, if you're not already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State teams. And in this final segment, taking a little bit of a different direction, kind of going back through history. And this was an interesting conversation. Again, if you want more discussions outside of this podcast, 
You can check out my profile on X, formerly known as Twitter. You can see it on the screen, but at Zach underscore Seiko. And I posed the discussion, the debate, if you could change one play or one moment in a Penn State football game from anywhere in history, which one would you pick? And the one that I came up with was the 2017 game, Penn State versus Ohio State, and the touchdown scored by that tight end for Ohio State. Only had two catches in that game, but one of them was the biggest one, and that was Marcus Baugh, where Ohio State won 39-38. to And I'm going to go through some of the other ones that stood out to you in the comments section as well. And let me know if there's a play, if you're being a part of this discussion now, let me know which play that you would change in a Penn State football game. But the reason I select this one, it's a little recent, okay? I remember watching that game and, and Ohio State just unleashing an unexpected, I don't want to say unexpected, but a, a comeback for the ages, outscoring Penn State 19-3 to in the fourth quarter. Penn State had control of that game. Penn State was leading by double digits. I, maybe you could even throw the blocked punt, because remember, Ohio State blocked the punt, Blake Gillikin's punt, that kind of changed the momentum in that middle of the fourth quarter. But why I picked that play and why and there's the fourth and five from 2018, right? There's all, there's all these different ones and I'll, and I'll go through some of the other suggestions, nominations as well. But this one's the most important to me, especially in the, in recent memory is because that 2017 team was the closest in terms of potential, uh, the what ifs, I, you know, what ifs only can get you so far, but that team should have made the college football playoff. They lost one by one point to Ohio State. Then they had to go back on the road against Michigan State. The lightning delay. I would change that one too. I would change the whole, just the weather, the, the whole situation. Getting fed dominoes, Chick-fil-A, being crammed into the locker room, yet and end up blowing that game against the Spartans. Penn State, that 2017 team, and a lot of those players that were around or would attest to and say, yes, over the past decade, in terms of the most talent, in terms of the team that was closest to the college football playoff, it was that team. And you change one or two plays in that Ohio State game from 2017. And Penn State probably goes 12-0 and because I don't think the Michigan State debacle happens. I mean, maybe there's a weather delay or what have you, but you're also lingering from the loss before and you got to go back to back on the road. It creates negative momentum. It also changes the way the series is going with Ohio State. You win in 2016. You win in 2017 on the road. Then 2018, hypothetically, right? You just start to build some positive momentum and show that like this one play, this one play, this touchdown kind of changes the whole trajectory of this series. It felt like Penn State could have taken ownership of this head-to-head -head matchup. And they never did. And now, you know, they've only won, you know, how many they've only won one in the past seven years, just that 2016 game that had the I'm sure Ohio State fans would change the block field goal in the 2016 game. But there were a lot of good other suggestions. The fourth and five comes up. And you know, that one's just an ugly, embarrassing play. At least Ohio State earned the touchdown in 2017. It feels like Penn State shot itself in the foot with that fourth and five call with Miles Sanders uh, just absolutely getting taken down by Chase Young. There's the play where uh, Michigan got some added time back late in the game. There, uh, Chad Henney going to Mario Manningham and to win the game in the final seconds. There's, uh, let's see some of the other suggestions as I have them pulled up here. One comment said 1989 against Alabama, 99, 1999 against Minnesota. I'd also throw in the 2019 game against Minnesota because that was a team with Sean Clifford taking over a quarterback for the first time. That was a Penn State team that you felt like was really talented. And look how the way they blew out Memphis in the Cotton Bowl. They had the dynamic duo of Journey with Journey Brown and Noah Kane, right? Uh, here's a, a Ohio State was a common selection here. The overtime game where Nick Bosa just had almost a free rush and the and the running back, Akeel Lynch, had to pick up Christian and tried to protect Christian Hackenberg against Joey Bosa, who was going to be an effective pass rusher, as we all saw. 2017 Rose Bowl is a good one. USC making that final kick, the interception that was thrown late in the game. There, there are a lot of, a lot of good ones. I think one that will probably sting for Penn State fans the most, going back a little bit in the 2000s, the 2008 game against Iowa, where they, I remember I was in, I was a child, I was a kid, and I remember watching that in a New York, I was visiting New York City with my parents, and I remember watching that one in the hotel room, 
and Penn State was undefeated, number three in the country. And that is where kind of there was the turn for that Penn State Iowa rivalry, if you will. I know Penn State, you know, I'm wearing the sweatshirt, right? And Penn State is unrivaled, but Iowa started to become a little bit of a thorn, and Kinnick Stadium started to get some more respect in the modern era of college football there. And that last second Iowa field goal to win 24 to 23. That one's certainly one that you would like to change. So if you haven't already contributed, let me know in the conversation one moment, one play from a Penn State football game that didn't exactly go their way that you would change. And for more conversations like that, check out at my profile on X, formerly known as Twitter, for some of those extracurricular discussions. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lines. I appreciate you checking out the episode. Like it, share it with friends and family. Subscribe if you're not already. Follow along wherever you get your podcasts. We're going to have more discussions about recruiting, about wrestling, men's basketball, men's hockey, so much more. It is all right here on Locked On Nittany Lions.